If you've been using a modern translation, such as the NIV as shown, uh, for any amount of time, you may have noticed when you come to the end of Mark, at verse 8, you'll usually have some type of footnote reading the earliest manuscripts and some other ancient witnesses do not have verses 9 through 20. And I'll either put the last 12 verses in brackets or like the NIV has put them all in italics. The NIV casts a lot of doubt on these passages, doesn't make an explicit attempt to tell you that these aren't authentic. However, I do think that everyone translating the NIV did believe they were not. So are they or aren't they? Let's take a look at the evidence and we'll make our decision. Here we have our UBS 3rd edition corrected and our textual apparatus regarding verses 9 through 20. Now there's a lot of information given on this particular passage. Not just verses 9 through 20, but many variants within the passage. We're going to focus mainly on the last 12 verses as whether they're authentic or if any other ending is authentic. Because what you may not know is that there is actually more than one ending to Mark. Typically, the ending at verse 8 is called the shorter ending, and verses 9 through 20 are regarded as the longer ending, and there are some other variations of this. Um, but let's, let's go through the evidence and we'll, we'll work on that as we get there. So, the UBS giving an A rating to the omission, verses 9 through 20. The evidence uh, we have is Sinaiticus, Faticanus, and Minuscule 304. Uh, along with Syriac, Coptic, Armenian, Georgian, and patristically, Clement, Origen, Eusebius, Jerome, and several others that are lesser well known, uh, do attest to the shorter ending. Now, 9 through 20, there's a lot more external evidence for this passage. Um, there is a shorter ending which is added only in Old Latin, some Old Latin, and the shorter ending and verses 9 through 20. We have a few majuscules here, some minuscules, and some ancient translations. Uh, Code XW has a longer and uh, long addition after verse 14, but it's, it's the only one with this unique passage. So, with all this, I think we can dismiss Code XW right off the bat with its. Uh, addition after verse 14. It stands alone. It's quite unique. So that uh, addition, I don't think that anyone calls it genuine. And uh, the shorter ending, no one believes it is genuine to Mark. And the shorter ending with 
the longer ending. No one is arguing is authentic either. Looks like I have another audience member here. Okay. So, the main debate is between verses 9 through 20 and whether or not they are genuine. Externally, it seems that the longer ending has a lot of external evidence on its side. Not only is it the majority reading, it does have some ancient evidence behind it. Alexandrinus, Framer Scriptus, Codex Beze. Along with Codex W, also attesting to uh, that longer ending as well. Um, so externally, the longer ending does have a lot of evidence behind it. However, externally, the shorter ending does have I'll often be agreeing, which does mean that this reading goes back about a hundred years prior at the very least, so at least to the third century, and I would argue all the way back to the original, along with having even Minuscule 304 uh, attesting to the shorter ending. Uh, Jerome, in his writings, does attest that many manuscripts did not contain the longer ending, as well as Eusebius. So manuscripts back in their days uh, also did not contain this passage. So we do know that there were others besides Olive and B. So that's the external evidence, and I think whenever these two uh, agree that that is a great uh, attestation for a passage. Now looking at this internally, um, we have a short ending uh, right after Jesus is resurrected and the women at the tomb running away and saying no one, nothing to anyone because they were afraid. So, this short ending without a resurrection appearance uh, does seem to call for something to come in afterwards. And what it appears to be is that it is more likely, as evidenced by the numerous variants, several other endings to this passage, that people were trying to fill in this gap, trying to find something to put at the end of Mark, so it isn't so abrupt. Um, these longer endings uh, don't really match with Mark's brevity and his tone there's a lot of language that Mark does not tend to use um, and there are a lot of controversial doctrines in this ending such as handling snakes and drinking poison that uh, don't really fit with the character of how Mark was um, the, the language doesn't fit the author um, so, putting that all together, on top of all of the evidence going all over the place, there is, it's very inconsistent, although there are, uh, the majority of manuscripts having 9 through 20, even among 9 through 20, there are a lot of variations within just that passage. So it seems that this 
as it went through a lot of editing and a lot of whittling down and is extremely suspect and I and many others would argue that this passage uh, is absolutely not authentic to Mark. The best evidence externally being the agreement of all of them be and that it being much more likely that someone would add an ending here rather than miss all of this. Scribes tended to only omit passages on accident and it is near impossible to omit so much text here at the end of Mark. So in all of that, the last 12 verses of Mark, known as the longer ending, are most assuredly not authentic. So, if we don't have the last 12 verses of Mark, are we losing anything that is absolutely critical to the Christian faith? Absolutely not. We have the resurrection, as in verse 6. He is risen, he is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter, he's going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told. The resurrection is here. And there are many questionable things. Mary Magdalene, out of whom had, he had driven seven demons, someone that was introduced long, long before this passage, so why we have to know who she is again, don't know. Um, here we have um, something similar to the end of Matthew, uh, the Great Commission. And here we have, whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. Now this, this right here, this combination of whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, passage that has often been used to preach baptismal regeneration, agree with it or not, this is problematic. Here, in verse 18, we have Jesus supposedly prophesying that his disciples will pick up snakes with their hands, and when they drink deadly poison, it will not hurt them at all. They will place their hands on sick people, and they will get well. Now, while some of this is true, that his, some of his disciples did do this, uh, including Paul being bitten by a snake, but uh, I don't think that's what this is referring to. And this is quite a dangerous doctrine, should it be true, which if these verses are not authentic, they are not. Um, the, those following Christ, when they drink deadly poison, will not hurt them at all. Um, how many foolish and naive Christians would believe this and uh, end up harming themselves greatly? We aren't losing anything by not having these last 12 verses. In fact, we are actually losing some detrimental things. Um, no, I would not argue for these last 12 verses. I find them very problematic, both textually and doctrinally. And uh, I would continue to argue that they are not authentic to the Word of God. Thank you.